Um, so I wanted to start off with something inspirational about work plans to get us started, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be a very interesting topic for famous people. So no Miley Cyrus quotes out there about work plans. Um, but I, I did find this one, and I don't know who Jim Ron is, but uh, that is his picture on the left. Um, so why have a work plan? Um, you could read some of the, the details on the slide, um, but I wanted to present on work plans specifically because I think they're really an essential first step um, at the start of any project, and especially since as fellows we just have a year really to accomplish the objectives and the, and the goals that we have. Um, it's important to stay on track um, with the work that you're doing. All right, so. Um, what I'll mostly be talking about is how to create your work plan and uh, some of the best practices around work plan development. So um, counter, somewhat counterintuitively, you don't start with the first step um, of your work when you're creating your work plan. You actually kind of start backwards. So um, start with what your, whatever your end goal or objective is in mind. So um, for me right now, it's this November 15th um, strategy deck that we have uh, due to the board. So um, start with that and say, OK, what are all of the key milestones that I need to get to in order to develop a comprehensive strategy by the 15th? Um, well, I would first need to do an internal assessment of our capabilities. I would then need to look into um, the external environment and identify key opportunities there. And then we, I would need to do an opportunity identification and prioritization. And finally, um, actually complete the deck itself. So those, those are, for me, my key milestones. And then underneath each of those key milestones, you're going to have a series of, of more day-to-day -day tasks to accomplish um, in order to accomplish those milestones. So for instance, that would be things like completing secondary research, um, primary research such as interviews, field visits, um, focus groups, whatever it may be specific to your particular assignment. Um, and then you would want to assign, if there's other people on your team besides you or so you're managing other resources, you would want to assign owners to each of those tasks and um, set target completion dates. So that's basically the gist of creating the work plan. Um, you can see that there's two different images on the left. The first is, is sort of that detailed view where you're, you're listing out the task and the dates due. And then um, the second is just a, a visual depiction of that. So you can see, um, you know, over time, you know, what the different sequence of steps are that you'll need to take and um, when they're due. Uh, and that's called a, a Gantt chart as well. So. This is the last slide, but I wanted um, to also just list a couple of the, the helpful tips and or best practices that I've come across um, throughout the time that I've been using with plans. Um, so the first is to really just make it a, a living document um, and reference it all the time. Uh, it's a really nice way to communicate your project status to um, other people on your team. Um, into your team leadership or supervisors. And by making it accessible to others, um, especially if you're on a larger team, uh, you can say use um, like SharePoint or Smartsheets. Um, people can make their own edits as needed and really make it a, a, a collaborative document. Um, another tip is to build in what I would like to say is like a range of 10 to 20 percent contingency based on um, how big your project is. So by that I mean, okay, so if I have a document or a deliverable due on November 15th, well, I'm not going to build my work plan to say like, oh, I'll finish this on September 15th, this on October 30th, and then boom, the presentation will be done on November 15th. Mm -hmm. I'll actually probably want to set my due date a little bit ahead of that, like on November 5th or, or something around that time period, because you really, Never, nothing ever really goes according to plan, and there's always, you know, various things, factors that are outside of your control, or, or maybe potentially um, different tasks that you hadn't foreseen that'll come up. So it's a good thing to build in that extra time 
um, so you don't have to say like rush at the end of a project to get everything done. Um, another helpful tip number three is to identify any risks or mitigation strategies um, for activities that are not 100% under your control up front. And usually those are things involving interviews with people I, both inside and outside of your organization, um, other dependencies on, on people outside of your team, uh, simply because, I mean, I found this a lot, especially when I need to talk to others um, outside of my organization, is that people won't always prioritize your work first, and there will inevitably be delays or cancellations. So um, always try to come up with a plan B and a plan C, if possible. Number four, um, review and update often. So I, I found on a lot of projects, and it's, it's something that you know just happens, is that you, know, you get immersed in your work, and maybe you miss a couple of the internal deadlines that you had set for yourself, but you're still OK. And, and things just don't, timelines don't get updated. And eventually, um, because of one reason or another, your, your entire work plan is out of date or, or behind. Um, and when that happens, well, first of all, you know, you got behind your project plan, which is not the best thing, but it's understandable because things happen and they're not always under your control. But then the fact that you didn't update your um, work plan to accommodate for those changes means that it's more likely that you'll fall further behind because you're not resetting your goals as, as um, things come up. And then uh, other useful tools um, typically to to document your work plan that I've liked um, in the past. Um, the most basic is Microsoft Excel, because you can just create a, basically a, a spreadsheet with um, a list of your items and then convert it into a Gantt chart. Uh, Microsoft Project is really nice because it creates the Gantt charts for you automatically. And then we also have access to Smartsheets, which is great because it does the same thing, um, but it's also um, something that you can share with other people on your team. And I'm sure there's people on this call who've had experiences in the past um, dealing with work plans or just project management in general. So um, if you guys have any other tips or best practices as well, I would love to hear um, what you guys have to add. Um, I, have a, I have a question. I mean, what if you have a really fluid manager who doesn't believe in a structured plan like this and wants you to be you know, more versatile? Like, How do you convince your manager to allow you to follow a plan like this? So, well, the nice thing about work plans is that it is something like that you can change throughout time. I mean, just because you you set certain dates for yourself at point A, I mean, you are the master of your own plan. You can always change things, um, you know, add new work streams or or change due dates. But I think it's just because it's someone is versatile or you know. It doesn't mean that you necessarily shouldn't have a work plan because you always want to have some stated objective in mind, right? So, um, you know, even if it's it's not something that you share with your manager because he, he doesn't like to use that particular tool, I think you should. It, it's a good thing to have, um, you know, some kind of, of key deliverable or, or finding or say you want to sell, you know, 12 accounts or, or find 12 new donors by the end of the year, um, just to have that internal goal I think is, is a good thing. So um, there's, I guess, a, a quick story for you guys um, around some of my previous experiences with work plans. Um, you know, I was on a project with a national wireless communications provider. And um, they had asked our team to develop a strategy and roadmap to reduce costs across their entire network um, of cell towers, which is about $20 billion in budget and spanned 28 different um, regional markets, each with their own different market leads and associated business units. And we were a team of about um, 10 to 15 20-something-year-old consultants being led by a senior manager. So. We had four months to complete this project, um, and by the way, uh, the client didn't tell us this at the time, but it was something that they would typically have done in about uh, a year. So uh, there's definitely a, a challenge entering into this situation, and one of the first things that we did was create a, a very detailed um, work plan encompassing 
all the different work streams um, that we were going to be doing. And um, I thought this was a pretty critical component of us being successful in this particular engagement um, because it helped organize um, our work from the beginning so that you know, every time we set out to do a specific task or, um, or go to an interview, you would ask yourself, is this really aligned to the end goal or objective that we have? Um, and if it isn't, then, you know, it's something that you need to consider not doing or, or um, revising. Additionally, it's a great way to coordinate amongst a large team. So like I said, we had 10 to 15 different people um, on the team, and those people were rotating throughout as well. Um, so it was a great way to make sure that everybody was on task and not overlapping or there, that there weren't any gaps in the work that we were doing as well. Um, it ensured accountability amongst our team as well. We had regular status updates and meetings with our client and with the leaders on our team um, referencing the work plan. And it was, I think, a, a really great communication tool in that sense um, for our leadership and our clients to see what we were doing. Um, and for them to be to rest assured that uh, we were we were doing what we said we were doing going to do, and um, finally, it's a, it's just also a great way to document all of the incredible you know work that you'll be doing throughout the course of the year. So after the the project was sort of wrapped up and we had our final deliverable presentation, we were able to say that we had you know interviewed 25 different. Um, you know, business organizations throughout the company, um, over 75 different stakeholders, and developed uh, a 250-plus step process. So that's always a, a cool takeaway, um, not just um, for others, but also, you know, for yourself. <laughs>